Okay, so welcome back. I uh, will uh, uh, continue our discussion from the previous uh, video. We were looking at uh, thermal treatment. Uh, we were looking at uh, different. Uh, uh, we looked at the different terminologies. We looked at uh, mass burn. We looked at this. Uh, how the system uh, kind of works over there. So, we will continue uh, this discussion uh, into this next video where uh, we will be looking at some of these what is the uh, behavior of an ideal incinerator although it is kind of a we have the this is ideal incinerator as you can see at the bottom over here uh, have uh, this ideal incinerator we will try to try to identify what is an ideal incinerator. So, uh, one of these uh, I would like uh, most common one is uh, this rotary rocking clin, rocking clin it is essentially it is a new variation of rotary clin, rotary clin is what you see here most of the time, rotary clin is the what is used in the cement plants as well. So, is rocking clean is it rotates only three fourth of a revolution. So, rather than uh, so it will uh, start from here it will make a rather than going uh, so it will go three fourth and then it will again come back. So, it does not make the whole revolution it does not kind of have a whole revolution it goes uh, three fourth and come back. So, that is called uh, rocking clean. So, rocking clean rotates only three fourth of a revolution and then reverses. So, that is the so, here the waste is subjected to less turbulence. So, uh, so that if it is less turbulence uh, actually it leads to the production of less particulate matter. So, less, less PM. So, if you remember we talked about time, temperature and turbulence. So, uh, turbulence is important, but uh, too much turbulence is also it is a hindrance uh, it is a it is not good because it leads to a more particulate matter. So, if you have less turbulence means less particulate matter into the secondary combustion chamber. So, and no need to shred the waste. Uh, so, it is a less tumbling of larger items through the unit. So, it is uh, no need to have a uh, waste shredder going on. Can handle variety of waste solid liquid containers uh, solid hazardous and all those uh, it can handle that. And uh, there is a uh, it is a slowly rotating refractory uh, linked line cylinder that is slightly inclined and it is a rocking. So, the insulation property is uh, by the fire clay and we have dense aluminum, silica, silicon carbide and all those things are here. There is a length to diameter ratio of 2 is to 1 to 10 is to 1. So, it can be 2 is to 1 in terms of uh, so that twice the diameter or it could be 10 times the diameter. So, it uh, depends on uh, the requirement. So, and the rotation is 0 0.3 to 3 meters per minute. So, it continuously mixes the waste. So, once the waste is mixing uh, that means uh, and the, it entrains the combustion air waste is mixing. So, the combustion will take place. So, it helps in that way. So, it is uh, uh, that is kind of one of the example of a uh, like a typical what we call ideal incinerator. And the combustion temperature should be between for the ideal incinerator again we are continuing the discussion the combustion temperature should be between 800 to uh, 1100 degree centigrade and that uh, we have already talked about that I think several times now that we do want to work at anything above 1000 degree because uh, we that reduces lot of air pollutants. So, and then uh, it does require large amount of excess air so sometimes 120 to 200 percent. Retention time uh, varies, retention time varies in the combustion chambers 0.1 to 2 seconds for gases, minutes to hours for solids. So, that uh, hap, uh, does happen. Minimizes products of incomplete combustion, uh, products of incomplete combustion uh, requires further oxidation of gases. Uh, so, uh, so it is a products of incomplete combustion. So, it uh, requires further oxidation of gases. So, we, we can have an afterburner, secondary chamber, we can have residence time up to 3 seconds, temperature of 1100 to 30, 1300 degree centigrade. So, those things can be done in terms of uh, uh, take care of the same complete combustion. Then uh, you would have uh, ash being produced, we have a continuous ash which is a non putrescible it could be sterile, it could be inert and then uh, things if there is a use for that it could be used for that particular purpose. Of course, we need to look at a beneficial reuse risk assessment uh, protocol for that. So, then uh, this is one other picture of the rotley clean afterburner. So, you have this uh, waste coming in as you can see the waste is coming in over here and it gets fed and uh, this there is a there is a we can in insert air from this particular point and the uh, material is uh, is being burned as it is moving. 
so it's a uh, it's it does it's moving slowly and there is also a uh, we do have we do have uh, those rotations going on as well so it does the mixing is also going on at the same time and it's moving so at and the it's it's burning we are supplying oxygen so all those th things are happening over here and then finally the ash will come down on this side whatever is the gases and other stuff the volatile stuffs will go up and where it needs to be further cleaned and then uh, it, it is you can uh, dispose that. So, that is how typically a rotary clean uh, works uh, for, uh, for its like for different operations. So, uh, what is the disadvantage of this kind of system? The disadvantage has been always that it is a high capital cost the capital cost of waste to energy plant is pretty high. So, that is always uh, the cause of concern and you do require a skilled manpower to run these waste to energy plants. Uh, some materials are non-combustible, some materials are require uh, supplemental fuel because there is not enough fuel to start it. Uh, air contaminant pop, uh, potential is there, dioxins, mercury, uh, particulate matter those things are uh, is there. Uh, volume of gas incineration is 10 times uh, great as well as thermochemical conversion process. So, it is a so, but there is a cost uh, for gas cleanup or pollution control. Uh, so, that is also uh, is there and the public uh, in general is a little bit worried about waste to energy plant because they risk imp imposed other than voluntary. So, it is a and they, they think that incineration will decrease the property value around their dust uh, distrust of government industry because the ability to because they are not sure whether the government will set it up whether whether it will be really working properly whether it will create air pollution problem and then whether uh, the government uh, organization will be able to help solve those problems so there is a less trust uh, on the government in uh, those uh, uh, matter which is uh, kind of sad but it does happen so as is the residue left from the combustion uh, of uh, MSW bottom ash. So, it is recovered from the combustion chamber. Then you have a heat recovery ash which is uh, of collected in the heat recovery system which is in the boiler economizer supply superheater and all that. You have a fly ash which is a particulate matter which is removed prior to shorbins, air pollution control residue, combined ash which most use facility combine the all ashes together and they manage it like that. So, it all uh, depends from plants to plants and also what kind of uh, business uh, uh, setup they have, what kind of market uh, they are looking at. So, and then try to prepare these uh, uh, material from them the for, uh, for the cell. Ash could be used as a reuse. Uh, there are uh, there are variety of methods for treating incinerator ash. Uh, you try to remove the ferrous metal. You try to remove the non-ferrous metal. So, the ferrous metal could be removed, non-ferrous metal could be removed. So, we have the ferrous metal, uh, non-ferrous metal is screening and crushing. So, those things can be done as well and then it can be used as aggregate. Uh, we had done some uh, work on this area of uh, so almost a decade back where, you, where we use this uh, waste to energy ash as a partial substitute uh, for aggregate in road construction. So, and then it, uh, it as an aggregate it could be used in a construction fill, could be used for road construction, landfill daily cover, cement block, treatment of acid mine drainage. So, a lot of other places where it could uh, uh, potentially be used for. So, that is uh, in terms of the ash treatment uh, what uh, can be done uh, with, the, uh, with the ash. So, next uh, is our flue gas. Uh, flue gas is the gas that exits the incinerator stack uh, which is going out that is the flue to the atmosphere and it may include particulate matter, uh, acid gases principally hydrogen sulphide, CO2 which produces H2CO3. And then NOx, NO, NO2 those things could be there, carbon monoxide could be there, there could be some hazardous metal, there could be some hazardous organic uh, uh, pollutants. So, those uh, things are possible, but uh, you can always uh, get them tested out. Each of these compounds must be considered in the design of the air pollution control system. So, we need to design our air pollution control system in such a way, so that all these uh, different aspects are, uh, uh, are taken care of. Particulates uh, usually it is uh, defined as PM uh, 2.5 which is uh, less than 2.5 micron. It is condensable pi pi particulate matter which is uh, vapors that condense to form particulates uh, because it sometimes causes is too slow for a combustion temperature, incomplete combustion or insufficient oxygen or overabundant of uh, uh, like too high temperature, insufficient mixing uh, and, red and residence time. So, and then too much of a turbulence, entrainment of particles in the air system. So, all these uh, can lead to uh, having a 
uh, particulate matter uh, present there. And in terms of the control cyclones, uh, they remove large particles and not effective for removal of small uh, particulates. For the small particulate, we need electrostatic precipitator, which is the efficient removal using electrostatic charge basic filter. So, that is uh, that's the bag house uh, that we refer to. So, particulates uh, do make uh, into uh, uh, waste to energy system, especially when you have incomplete combustion uh, and all those, uh, those kind of problems. So, then we have some, uh, there are acid gases also uh, pr produced as part of the process. It comes from chlorine, comes from sulfur, nitrogen, uh, Finland, uh, sorry, uh, nitrogen and uh, fluoride. Uh, uh, it's, it comes from chloride, sulfate, uh, uh, sulfur, nitrogen and also fluoride. There is a typo here. Uh, just let us see, this L should not be there. So, it is F in the refuse. So, it is essentially coming uh, from plastics, textile, rubber, yard waste and paper. So, if you have uncontrolled uh, uh, incineration, if you do not uh, control the incineration, it creates uh, generates around 18 to 20 percent of SUL uh, with pH of 2. So, we you need to reuse the acid gas scrubber usually ahead of electrostatic precipitator because otherwise your electrostatic precipitator will not uh, because of the high acid content it will be harmful uh, to uh, the parts and other things over there. So, when uh, we have to do a wet scrubber like a venturi scrubber, we can do a spray dryer, we can have a dry, uh, dry, cycle, dry scrubber injector injected dry sorbent lime. So, different things uh, we can uh, we have to manage those acid gases. So, it is all they are essentially acids in their gaseous form and uh, we need to kind of capture it and then treat it. So, that is uh, uh, that is uh, like a one thing about this. Then in terms of air pollution control process, uh, there is electrostatic precipitator, bag house, acid gases scrubber, activated carbon, selective non-catalytic reduction, catalytic converter. So, all those things uh, are which is a typically of a, it is kind of typical of you know, one uh, uh, like air pollution uh, control uh, process. So, if you want to compare, you can compare these different uh, components of that. So, the, so, ESP is uh, actually one is considered any, any plant you go to like first uh, among the first few questions is do you have an uh, electrostatic precipitator because it is a, it's a, it's a costly, it is uh, expensive to operate, but it does save a lot of uh, air pollution problem. So, uh, but the, so these are some of those uh, in terms of the air pollution control system, those are different instruments uh, which uh, people use. So, let us see what, what else we have here. We have, so, after that uh, we can, uh, there is a, this one is a comparison of air pollution control system. There are different like spray, spray dry absorber, there is a venturi, there is a packed bed, there is a dry electrostatic precipitator and for different uh, categories as you can see, uh, different uh, uh, category has been given to us like particulate removal uh, for uh, for the spray dry, uh, dry absorber, it is kind of poor. The best it do does uh, excellent is in dry electrostatic, uh, dry electrostatic precipitator. So then, if heavy metal is uh, best in terms of dry spray dry absorber. Acid gas removal is good uh, in again for spray dry remover. Residue is uh, uh, is kind of the same, but uh, it could be used in dry uh, ESP electrostatic precipitator. Then we have some auxiliary equipment in terms of the bag house, demister and ass handling. Uh, we have uh, turn downs, plumb, plumb separation, pressure drop, capital cost. So, these are the different parameters on which these three uh, air pollution control systems have been compared. And as you can see for the different type of, uh, for the different type of uh, 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 like a, for the removal of different type of contaminants, different technologies are there. So, we have to kind of look at a technology which is, which is going to really work for our plant. It's, uh, so, major components of waste to energy, you have to have the air pollution control. Uh, it is a mature technology now. Systems are uh, uh, available to meet most stringent air permissions requirement, especially European countries have those. It is custom matched to combustion technology. So, based on what kind of combustion technology you are getting, it can be custom made. Uh, waste to energy is mold, most highly regulated form of waste uh, uh, management. It does a lot of regulation and then emission because of the emission standards, because we have to make sure the emissions are not too high and the emission standards are more stringent than for most coal fire power plant or industrial uh, boiler. 
So there is another uh, few examples of as you can see the waste uh, being uh, uh, pumped and goes into this uh, uh, like a sort of a treatment system where things will get treated uh, and then uh, you, you get uh, the residual and other things that is coming out from there. So major components at waste to energy plant we could have a solid residue which is the metals and other stuff we have advanced combustion so which is slag with varying amount of fixed carbon up to 30 percent by weight slag may be reduced by response to reprocessing uh, plasma system is, is claimed that have as, uh, almost no residue but that is not really true uh, there is some residue will always be there and we have seen some residue uh, in our lab uh, pilot uh, labs lab uh, pilot work uh, with uh, this uh, plasma system. So, air emissions uh, uh, waste to energy most highly regulated as I mentioned most country have a strict regulation for air emission. Uh, EU and uh, Ontario A7 guideline considered to be the most stringent in the world. Technologies have been developed and applied to meet this standard. In Europe uh, waste to energy emissions are low and they are often considered irrelevant compared to industrial and other sources. So, if you uh, try to kind of replicate that uh, in other countries in other places in the world that kind of helps us uh, uh, in terms of uh, trying to have similar conclusion uh, in the Indian contest or from the Asian contest for that matter. Most countries have a strict standard in India also we do have uh, air quality standards which is uh, uh, we, we have some uh, European Union is a, is a uh, uh, tough one it is uh, European Union has one of the strictest standard then we have Ontario A7 uh, in Canadian system uh, every province can go even uh, more stricter than what the federal government requires so Ontario A7 guideline is considered actually one of the most stringent. But the technologies I said the technologies are out there in Europe uh, the emissions are so low that they are actually they are in it is uh, irrelevant compared to industrial and transportation sources. But at the same time in the Indian contest uh, we also our waste to energy plants uh, are uh, the technologies is, are out there and again these days it is a global technology. So technology from anywhere in the world can be uh, it is being procured and used in other places as well. Uh, of course there is a technology transfer and those things are there but uh, and you have to pay money for that. But uh, this. Uh, it is but we can make the emissions low that is the bottom line the technology has improved a lot over time and uh, so the emissions uh, can be uh, maintained. So there was a study uh, done a few years back where they looked at uh, like almost I would say other uh, not it is almost a decade back more than a decade back where uh, they looked at the extensive emission comparison based on energy production for different fuel sources. And they, were, they did take waste to energy figures from 50 existing waste to energy facility in Europe. So it does uh, took a, some data from uh, waste to energy facility. Oh, sorry, uh, here. So we had the 50 waste to energy facility was uh, taken from Europe. Then they got the cement clean data. They got some other data from the literature, and they tried to what uh, this particular uh, professor from uh, Technical University of Vienna, uh, group of uh, people they try to actually compare uh, the system. So here the first one they are trying to compare uh, this compression of dust and particulate emissions. So as you can see uh, waste to energy is kind of uh, uh, just little bit where it is uh, not little bit actually it is almost uh, 75 percent more than uh, gas. So it is a uh, waste to energy does uh, fare quite well but not as good as gas in terms of the comparison of dust and particulate emissions but it does much better than coal, lignite, oil, biomass and cement clean. So if you look at the coal it is around 3.8 uh, grams per gigajoule where waste to energy does 0 0.7. So it is nearly 20 percent of what you get from uh, the coal. So that is uh, so as, as you can see because of the technology because of the improvement in technology this air pollution control system a air pollution like we many, many times we say this APC air pollution control system we can reduce the emissions coming out of waste to energy plants. So that is what I am trying to stress for as if you remember the uh, I think two video back I mentioned about uh, there was an issue in uh, in Canada where uh, this uh, in uh, in Nova Scotia they are trying to set up a waste to energy plant using uh, uh, waste tire as a fuel source but uh, and then there is a lot of hues and cries about it because people are worried about uh, the air pollution impact coming from that. But uh, in, in terms of uh, if you look at the air pollution uh, impact from 
compared to the other emissions happening in from the European contest and this data this was presented in 2006. So, you can think about it could be data from 2003, 2004 which would be the, art, like the latest data that could be there. And uh, so, from 2004 and today we are in 2017. So, it is 13 years have already passed and in, uh, there is a lot of improvement in the air pollution control system in last 13 years. So, things have become much much better than what is being presented in this particular uh, this particular figures uh, this this slide and subsequent few slides in terms of emission. So, what I am trying to get uh, like the message that I want you to, uh, to take out of this is waste to energy system air pollution is not of a big deal if we do things properly. If we set up a good air pollution system as required by our uh, municipal solid waste management rules we can have a we will sorry we will not have a air pollution problem. Uh, the, uh, in Indian contest, I see more problem in terms of the waste not not having the segregated waste, having this construction and demolition waste uh, with this uh, leaves and other things getting mixed in our uh, waste stream. So that's where the reducing the calorific value, the moisture. Uh, moisture uh, one thing we do in our Indian waste to energy plant is uh, there will be a storage in the first uh, let the garbage come in and be in that storage. So, you basically have a storage bunker something like that where you have the waste being dumped in here and you let it sit the waste uh, for a few days and you have a kind of a channel at the bottom. So, moisture percolates. So, your water is actually going down and it gets collected and it is sent for treatment like a leachate. But uh, since the moisture content goes down uh, over uh, because of the uh, because of the gravity the water will flow down. So, uh, the, it reduces the moisture content you can you can have the crane come in and take the garbage from this uh, and then load it to the waste to energy plant. But it uh, it's reduces uh, the moisture content, increases our effective calorific value, but it's still the calorific value is not that high. So, our typically calorific value is uh, you know, maybe around 2000, 2500, something in that range. That's also a good uh, uh, waste. Uh, but if we uh, have uh, and then the consistency in the calorific value that is also very very important because when you are running a plant the plant requires consistency. So, those are the things which require actually should require more attention to how to make that happen rather than of course, we have to worry about the air pollution control, but if we do it properly, if our friends in the industry are being uh, uh, due diligence uh, in this area, we should not have any problem in terms of uh, air pollution system as long as it is done properly. So, as you can see in most of these uh, graphs, I will walk you through these graphs really quickly now. Uh, so, in, similarly for NOx emissions, uh, again uh, it does not, uh, some of the others do better than this, but it is actually not that uh, too bad as well. Com it is com comparable to other energy sources much better than the cement clean. So, NOx uh, coming out of that, uh, so that is another one and uh, let us see we have. Uh, uh, SO2, SO2 in terms of SO2 it is pretty low, it is uh, actually the lowest uh, among all the different uh, um, uh, fuel source that we are looking at here. Or so, we, waste to energy is the lowest, then we have coal, lignite, oil, gas, biomass or cement clean. So, for the, all the others it is much higher uh, than as compared to uh, this waste to energy plant. So, it is uh, um, it's, it's comparable to probably it is more slightly less than gas, but for others it is much uh, the difference is much high. So, what else uh, we have mercury, uh, mercury again uh, it does fare decently well not as good as oil or gas, but it does better for most of the other sources. Again uh, there are the comparison of mercury emissions from there, comparison of cadmium again uh, it does uh, uh, like a better than uh, some of like oil, cement clean or uh, biomass, uh, but for coal, lignite and this uh, it actually uh, it does uh, like, uh, worse than that. And the reason being cadmium does uh, our uh, waste. Uh, cadmium is used as a pigment for colors, cadmium is also used in electronics. So, you may have some e-waste, you have something else coming in there and that kind of creates your, uh, uh, you get uh, that uh, uh, like a little bit of cadmium making way uh, to your waste stream. Then you may have some dioxins and furans uh, where uh, we have this uh, uh, waste to energy is uh, slightly higher. These are, uh, these are our low, oh, sorry and uh, just a minute. Uh, so, here uh, 
the most of these are much lower uh, or waste to energy is slightly higher than the like it not it's uh, much higher than that but it's uh, much lower than compared to these two numbers as well so it's kind of in the middle in terms of dioxins and furans so we have to be careful in terms of uh, uh, dioxins and furans emissions so that uh, being said, uh, so in terms of all these emission slides that we looked at, uh, values uh, they are they are for the existing facilities. So these are for existing facility. First of all, this data, this presentation was made in 2006, and we are today 2017. So things have improved already. And it's, it's even on top of that, the data was for existing facilities. Some of them which were very very older. So what I'm trying to say that even, even uh, things have. A improved over time and even the dioxin furans and some of the other issues that you see that has also have been taken care of to most part. Newer facilities are made uh, to meet uh, more stringent emission standard. For example, uh, this Vancouver has uh, a Burnbury waste to energy facility, they has no detection of dioxin. You saw some dioxin showing up but uh, this particular plant uh, using the state of the art air pollution system does not show any dioxin showing up there. Uh, new technology exists to remove mercury from flue gas. So that is another thing is there. So as the technology improves, uh, this can be done. So waste to energy can work uh, in Indian contests. More emphasis, uh, emphasis has to be done on looking at the waste calorific value and how to keep that calorific value a decent number. Uh, so that uh, we have enough uh, uh, heat being produced so that the plant can run. So that is the more air pollution side technology is out there as long as we are honest about it and we do things properly for air pollution that should not be a problem and if, uh, of course if we do not do it there will always be problem. Uh, so there are if you look at the dioxin emissions uh, again uh, it is a little bit uh, older data but the, what, what thing uh, what we are trying to uh, uh, so over here is if you look at the dioxin emissions from different sources. So you have residential wood burning uh, which is on top then waste to energy is at the bottom uh, on this particular graph and in between you have the cement clean, others, pulp and paper, backyard barrel burning which is the open burning of garbage and metal spelting incinerator. So as you can see from 1987 to 2002 for uh, many of these categories uh, as you from um, waste to this is your waste to energy and then uh, you have uh, incineration um, like a bio biomedical hazardous we have the metal smelting this is the back air open burning of garbage part here then some others pulp and paper then on top is residential wood burning. So as you can see from uh, this waste to energy was a good uh, percentage wise is a good uh, uh, source like a very high source of dioxins uh, in 1970 uh, let us take this off in 1987 but in the few, when we came down to 2002 the percentage has gone down much much lower to a, like a single digit. So from around 60 to 65 percent the value has now down to almost close to 0 or few percent. So that is the source the improvement in waste to energy uh, air pollution control system for controlling of dioxin because that is one of the important aspect. Other way uh, open burning of garbage which was all maybe around 10 percent or less than 10 percent today it is actually this is the highest cause of dioxins and furin. And I think I have told you already before there was a UNEP study United Nations Environmental Program study was done on this where they found that dioxins and furans uh, major source of them is actually open burning uncontrolled burning of garbage on the dump site on people's backyard or uh, sometimes on purpose sometimes uh, it is happening by accident but that is the open burning of garbage is the major source of dioxins and furans. So reduction of mercury again uh, this uh, different uh, like from 1989 if you look at here from 1989 now 1995, 2001 data, uh, 2000 uh, so around different types of coal for waste to energy plant. These three are waste to energy and the last one is called uh, coal based thermal power plant. So as you can see we have kind of gone down in terms of uh, mercury emissions. In, uh, in terms of uh, uh, waste to energy where in coal based thermal power plant is from the 2000 data was uh, over there. So, it's, it is so basically it says that uh, having a waste to energy plant is sometimes even better than a coal based thermal power plant and uh, are not, of course it is never the worse than coal based thermal power plant. 
So, waste to energy uh, this in terms of the carbon it emits CO2 like any other combustion process uh, 40 to 60 percent is considered biogenic which is a uh, part of the active carbon cycle. So, it is uh, it's unlike CO2 from fossil fuel this uh, anything with the biogenic does not contribute towards uh, climate change uh, you can always debate on that uh, uh, whether it should be included or not, but they are not included in climate change as of today. Uh, electricity from waste to energy reduces the need to generate power from other sources. Uh, it says uh, less CO2 equivalent uh, than landfilling. If you do an LCS study on that and then the one European study calculated uh, that uh, waste to energy emits 0.35 kg CO2 per kg of waste where landfill emits nearly double of that 0.69 kg CO2. So, that is the base coming from one uh, European data. So, it is uh, let us so, CO2 or if you compare with the transportation and waste to energy, CO2 emissions uh, from the waste disposal like uh, the transportation part uh, landfill is uh, this high, waste to energy is right over there and from the transportation uh, it is uh, transportation of the garbage uh, it is uh, over uh, on that particular side. So, it is a to CO2 emissions for the different sectors of uh, uh, waste uh, uh, management. So, that is on that particular aspect. Costs, uh, it is a high capital cost, uh, operating cost is also high, but it is a uh, generally offset by energy cell if you can sell the for larger facility. Tipping fee actually should cover capital repayment. So, that is the capital fee generally cover, cover that. Once paid, waste to energy can be a revenue generator, facility life usually go from 20 to 50 years. So, that is uh, you can make some money out of waste to energy plants as well. So, revenues, uh, how, what are the sources of revenue? We can get it from the tipping fee. Uh, Let us see one. Uh, we can get some money from the tipping fee. We can get some money from the electricity sales, a steam sale. You can do the district heating, which we talked about earlier. You can recycle the metals from the ash. You can get some CO2 credits, uh, carbon dioxide credits. So, those things are also possible. So, that is, uh, and then there is a always a economy of a scale. Like if you have this is the capacity, oops. Uh, there is a capacity uh, in terms of uh, uh, how much tons per year and that is the cost as you can see the as you increase the capacity the cost goes down and somewhere kind of tries to flat out. So, usually if you work in this particular area uh, you are better off in terms of economy of scale. Um, so, that is uh, okay. So, that is so, there is a uh, there is not nowadays there are acceptance of waste to energy as a diversion some places it is more some places it is less uh, more in European countries and in India it is now getting popular as well. So, we are, but there are some of course issues negative public perception that has to be dealt with lack of public awareness of technological pro progress which we talked about earlier large initial investment uh, higher operating costs need for long term waste supply contract you have to make sure people the waste is supplied over there. Then we have to all there you have to look at the full cost accounting and whether it is a renewable energy or not a renewable energy, greenhouse gas credits. Then uh, there are uh, these are some of the examples uh, which you can let the how much mass band facilities are there in different places. It is in terms of the other renewable, renewable energy source waste to energy is nearly 80, 80 uh, 28 percent of uh, energy coming from uh, uh, waste other compared to others geothermal is the same and others are smaller than that landfill gas is another 14 percent. So, altogether waste uh, from waste management nearly for, for more than 40 percent of the energy can come from the waste management sector as well. Europe lot of waste to energy plant we already talked about that uh, where because of the uh, landfill directive which is kind of forcing people to go for waste to energy plant. We looked at this slide earlier where as you can see more and more waste to energy plants is being uh, the middle one the purple uh, sorry the, the, the purple or the magenta color is uh, your uh, uh, waste to energy and as you can see on the west left side where you have the western European countries we have more and more waste to energy uh, being happening. These are some pictures of some of those very cool looking waste to energy plants 200 tons per day. Another one you can see over here that is the in Lille in France that in uh, Karlsloe in uh, Germany uh, they look uh, in Paris France uh, these are looks pretty uh, cool. This is the mo most uh, if you go to Austria any time in your in your life Vienna do visit this waste to energy plant it is really looks like a cool one. And the, the middle that you see over here this is not a chimney that is actually that is not a tower that is essentially a chimney. So, it is uh, they made it really a beautiful one. Then uh, these are the ones you can read about that uh, let us uh, kind of we I want to I want to wrap this up in this particular issue ok let us uh, uh, 
uh, stop here and then uh, we'll continue our discussion in the next uh, video. And uh, so we are kind of coming towards the end of waste to energy and then uh, we'll move towards the landfill uh, section in the next video. Just few slides left for the waste to energy which I want to talk about uh, because of uh, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that in the next video. So again, uh, uh, keep working on your assignments. Uh, if you register for the exam, if you want, uh, I think the registration, uh, 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 you need to register for the exam if you have not done that. Uh, and also if you want to take the exam and all, on top of that, uh, keep the discussion board active so that we can respond to any queries. Any queries come to the discussion board. That's the only forum where we'll, uh, in, uh, we'll be responding to. So again, thank you and uh, let's uh, have our uh, journey together. Okay, thanks.